If you have forecasted data, you're probably wondering, like, how do I visualize it in a way that our users or our audience see that this is actually forecasted data? It's not true data. It's an estimate or a guess. Um, I'm going to show you a way to do it in Power BI using just Power BI visuals. There's no custom visual here used. And it's actually quite neat, so let's get started. Okay, so the, for the example, we're going to use United Nations forecasted data for population. I have it for the European Union, the 27 members, and for the rest of the world. This is for the European Union only, and I, it goes from 1960s to 2100s. And as you can see, this solid line is the one that is the data that is true, that is actual. So population counts are done once a year for the previous year. And then the dotted line is the forecasted data, what the UN thinks that the population will grow, in this case, decrease in the European Union. Okay, so let's go and do it. So this is the data. I have here the year and then I have the population, and then I have two groups for the EU and for the rest of the world because I'm doing other stuff with it. Um, so this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to put the time label, which is a year, and then we have here the population. Obviously, you cannot put the population here because it will sum the population for all the years. It makes absolutely no sense. Um, so what we need to do is to create a measure. So let's do that. So the first thing that we need to know is to uh, specify the break year. So the break year is this year minus one. So whatever year that we're on, minus one. That's where you're going to get population data from. So this is, I'm going to call it last year of actual population. <laughs> you know what I mean. So to get this year, we're going to do year, okay. We're going to do year, and then we're going to do today. So this will give us actually 2023, which is this current year. If I do minus one, it will give us 2022. So now we have a measure that has the breaking point between the actual and the forecasted data. And we're going to use these for our measures, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to create a new measure that is going to be EU27 population actuals. I don't, yeah, yeah, allows it. Okay, perfect. So we're going to calculate the sum of the population, but we need to put two filters. If you remember the date, um, the data had EU27 and the rest of the world, we just want to have for EU27. So we just want to have the forecasted population EU27, that's the column that contains that categorization, is going to be just EU27. And we need to do a new filter. And this filter is going to be based on year. So we want to have, like, the, on the forecasted population, the time label should be less or equal to... Do you remember the last year? So we want to have some the population up to 2022. That's what we're saying. If I put it in there, I guess it calculated already. And I'm going to put it here instead of this population thing. And as you can see, it's telling us that, okay, the population is from 347 blah, 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 up to here, that is 2022. And now we're going to do the exact same thing, but for the forecasted data. So we're going to have two measures. The reason we have two measures is because we want to format them different, so we need to separate them. So I'm going to copy these. Maybe I should put actuals like that. I prefer that. So I'm going to copy that and do a new measure that is going to be the forecasted forecast. And it's going to be some of the population, it's going to be for year 27, but we want to have after. And we're going to keep the equal, we want the, want to, the lines to align on 2022. So we put it there. And this is where we will see the decline and start to look the same. And now it's all about formatting. So if we go in here, 
we're going to have uh, for the serious actuals, we're going to have solid and we want to have uh, uh, that color is fine like that. And then for the forecasted data, we want to have a dotted no, or, a, or a dash, probably a dash. And then like that, maybe, and then a lighter blue. So maybe we should have it like that. Perfect. Right. So as you can see, it's starting to look quite like the other one. There is one thing though. I don't like that the colors are so different. So you probably have it the same. So we're going to do two things to make it more obvious what is forecasted data. The first one is we're going to add a constant line in here, add a line. And then the value is going to be actually our measure because we want to put the line on the 2022 and we do have a measure for that. So we can just use it and you'll see it there. I'm going to have it like a gray color and I want to have it solid. Right, and then I'm going to put uh, this style, the data label. You see how horrible it is that it gets scrumpy in there? It should be outside of that. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. What you can do actually is position it under, which is not great, but yeah, whatever. So there you have it. So now we have like, okay, 2022, and then you can see, but we still. Still, I still want to emphasize even more that it's forecasted data. And you can do it actually with the shaded area. You can do it after, and then you can have it like that. And the transparency, you can play with it if you don't want to play with the grays. Something like that. So for data labels, you need the, the labels that you see in here, they have actually quite a neat feature that works pretty well. So I have it already on, and here on do, 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 label density, this is very, very cool. I mean, they do things that they don't tell us that they do, or I completely miss this. So here you can select how many data labels you want. And it is actually quite neat because you do want to give a little bit of context to the reader without overwhelming. So you don't want to go and say, okay, give them all the labels. The story here is not that. The story here is the population is going up and then it's going down. But then you may wonder like how much. So if we put enough data labels, and I think one thing is very cool is that it always keeps the first one and the last one. So it starts with 347 million and stops at 342. So it's increasing the population is going to be in part to 1960s. This label density is actually very, very nice. So you can choose how many labels you give and you can see that it's picking them up in the highs or the lows. So I really enjoy it. So there you have it. Now we have forecasted data visualized in a very good way using only Power BI visuals. Very, very good. I hope you enjoyed the video too and I will see you again on the next one.